Oh, I didn't mean to start it. Oh, that's okay. You can stop it. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our second Digital Summer Learning Series. My name is Jennifer McClendon, and I am with the NOCC and serve as our Education and Mission Programs Manager. I'm delighted to join you tonight. I'm so excited to have Sharon Skittle with, Skittle with us tonight to talk about movement as medicine, yoga for cancer. It should be a really great evening. I just want to remind you, um, if you can, you will see Sharon's, uh, uh, what do you call it, co-host back there, Sarah, sitting in the chair. And so if you can, if you are able to, not necessary, but if you're able to have a sturdy chair with no legs, um, I mean, if you want a chair with legs, but with no wheels or arms, that would be great, like a dining chair. Um, that will assist you with some of the movements this evening, um, but it's not necessary. So you can adjust and do what you need to do where you're sitting. But I just want to thank you for joining us tonight and being with us. This digital series is really intended for, you know, to provide you survivors and caregivers with self-care strategies that will help you on your ovarian cancer journey. And it's supported by donors and partners that are dedicated to providing these learning opportunities to you and a platform for our TEAL community to be inspired. So before we begin, I just wanna uh, mention a few little housekeeping items that you've automatically been placed on mute, but I want to let you know that if you have a question at any time, feel free to unmute yourself um, or you can type a question into the chat to us either way. Um, we are recording today's session, so this will be available for later viewing on our YouTube channel, but I want to let you know that we are recording in speaker, uh, speaker view only, so your privacy is protected. And at the end of the program, we will go into a question and answer session with Sharon, and we will stop the recording for privacy as well. But feel free, so feel free to share your camera. We would love to see all of your lovely faces. And one last thing before I stop talking is make sure to add our, um, our email. You'll see it here underneath my, 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 our logo here. Add digital at ovarian.org to your email address book because we've gotten some feedback that some of our email communications are not reaching people. So I just want to make sure that you do receive our communications. So, okay. I, I can quit talking. Let's get to it. Tonight's program is focused on how movement, specifically oncology yoga, can play an essential role in your cancer management and recovery. There are so many benefits to doing this movement, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk, so I'm going to turn it over to our guest this evening, Sharon, and her assistant, Sarah. Um, Sharon is an oncology yoga instructor, and I'm excited to hear what you have to say and, and go through with us tonight, Sharon, and it's over to you. Hey, thanks. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks so much for having me here tonight. I'm happy to share what I've learned over the past few years. Um, a quick bit about myself. I have been in the fitness industry for well over 20 years and started as a trainer and taught spin and boot camp and a million other things and um, yoga. And during the last, for the past eight years, I've owned a yoga studio and cycling and boot camp studio. And I had a couple clients that had cancer and I worked with a PA who um, worked at Allegheny Health Networks, one of their oncology department and her husband, who was a physical therapist, and he had said, oh, let's teach, you know, yoga classes for people with cancer. And so the first class we taught to a bunch of nurses from HN, and I think they wanted to hang me because it was a physical practice. And, <laughs> and he was like, no, this is good. They can do this. And some people who have been doing it already could do it. But after taking the yoga for cancer training, um, I have scaled it back a lot and there's good reasons for it. So as we go through tonight's program, no matter how fit or active you are, we're gonna do less and there's a reason for it and we'll get to that. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is um, the cancer survivorship recommendations, I think from the American Cancer Society are 150 to 320 minutes of exercise per week. And they call it moderate exercise. And a lot of times you'll go to the doctors and they'll say moderate exercise. And they don't tell you what that is. 
So moderate exercise is considered aerobic exercise. And aerobic exercise means that you are working in a 70, 75% of your maximum heart rate. And it's an area where you could converse easily. So it's not that winded, losing your breath, out of breath feeling that you think of when you think exercise. It is a comfortable level of movement where you could carry on a conversation. And the yoga for cancer stresses that and there's a reason for all of that and we'll also get to that. Um, as a trainer, there's five key components of fitness that we look for, muscular strength, muscular endurance, cardiovascular um, benefits, body mass index, and flexibility. Um, I teach a program called the five key, compo key components of fitness and the missing link, and the missing link is mindfulness. And Yoga for Cancer addresses that. And it's one of the biggest benefits as a survivor or a patient or a caretaker is the mindfulness that comes when you begin to slow down your movements, link them to breath, and, and find out and see what the benefits are. Um, there is a blueprint that Yoga for Cancer created. And the reason that they created this, the woman who started the foundation, Terry Prinster, had cancer herself. Um, and truly type A needed to research everything, did and created a program that is incredibly comprehensive. Um, my daughter is a resident and wanted to be an oncologist. She still hasn't declared that yet, but she went through the book with me and was blown away. She's like, wow, this is very, very precise and comprehensive. And she was impressed with the program. So I felt better sharing information because, you know, I read it and take their word for it. And so I feel like I have a little backup, but um, the benefits that this program offers are you regain muscle strength. So the movements are designed to actually help strengthen any muscle strength or build it. If you, I didn't start exercising until my thirties, you know, I never had exercise. I took my first spin class and called my doctor and was sure I had a ruptured aorta because my grandmother had one. I'm like, I have one too. And they're like, no, you're just out of shape. And so getting back <laughs> in shape, if you've never been in shape, it, it's a fun thing to do. And this is a great way to start. Maintaining a healthy immune system. You don't often associate exercise with a healthy immune system like you think it's eating you think but there is movement there is breath the lymphatic system twisting for the digestive system so there's science that supports this um, so the yoga also helps maintain a healthy immune system protecting and strengthening your bones will do some standing exercises or you'll step up onto a block step off of a block step onto a step or just shift weight from one leg to the other helps build that bone density um, Reducing cancer-related fatigue. Cancer-related fatigue is a very real thing. And sitting still and breathing and quieting your mind can help release and reduce that fatigue. Um, reducing the risk of lymphedema or aiding if you do have lymphedema. So there are some poses that help um, reduce the swelling. There are some that help brush the lymph and, and get that fluid moving because that's the one system that doesn't pump. Like our heart pumps our blood. Our lymph node relies on gravity and movement to flush that fluid. Um, supporting a healthy digestive system, twisting exercises are great um, for massaging your ascending and descending colon and they help with constipation. Um, and then finally, decreasing your stress levels, linking your breath to your movement and slowing it down and counting and using a mantra really can help reduce our anxiety and our stress level. So as we go through the program tonight, we're gonna to come up with our own mantra that works for you and that you can use it to breathe in and to breathe out. And a mantra is simply a, a slogan that works for you. I usually will use, I am strong and I am healthy. I inhale, I am strong, exhale, I am healthy, but we'll get to that and you can use whatever works for you. Um, yoga for Cancer has five pillars of it. And this goes right along with what the Digital series has been. Um, breath awareness, moving the body, mind and body connection, creating community, so finding a community to work with, and then self-compassion and contentment. And so we, um, I, I didn't have ovarian cancer, I had uterine cancer about 15 years ago. And I was fortunate enough that when I was diagnosed, all I needed was a hysterectomy. So I don't have the same frame of reference as chemo and radiation. But I know what it feels like to be told you have cancer and to think 
what and to feel powerless and feel like it, it's out of your control. And so there are things that are going to come up in your treatment that you have absolutely no control over and you're forced to accept it. But this movement, this breath, this thought process, this is all up to you and you have the ability to change your experience and to take some control, some power over your experience by simply moving and breathing. And that is what our bodies are meant to do. Um, does anybody have any questions before we start? I haven't seen any come through the chat yet, but yes, feel free to unmute and ask any question at any time. Okay, so we're gonna start first with our mantra. Um, and the Yoga for Cancer series likes to use metaphors at the beginning, and usually it's the instructor that will do that. But um, yoga can take your breath away, or cancer can take your breath away. Yoga can help you take it back. Um, a mantra, again, is something that you breathe in and you breathe out, and it causes you to relax. So sometimes when we're trying to sit quietly, our minds are racing with our to-do list, our grocery list, our shopping, cleaning, kids, and we don't get a chance to really quiet our minds. So one of the things we do to quiet our minds is come up with a mantra that works. And for me, I often use, I am strong and I am healthy. So when I sit still, I inhale, I am strong, and I exhale, I am healthy. So take a minute to just think of something, and it can be, I am cancer-free, I am a survivor, I am president, everybody works for me. Whatever it is that you want, come up with that mantra. And then just sit nice and tall in your chair. Typically when we sit in a meditative state, we want our knees below our hips, but we're not gonna meditate. We're just gonna sit and start to deepen our breath. So I like to place my hands on my thighs. It just makes me feel a little more grounded. You can put your fingertips together, whatever posture feels comfortable for you. And then you can sit up nice and tall. I'm gonna put this back to Sarah. And that way I'll be able to direct you guys a little more when she starts to move. So sitting up nice and tall, you want to imagine there's a string at the top of your head. Can you guys see me okay? Can you see Jen? Yes, we can see. Like, and if you would like, if you would like to make Sharon and Sarah larger on your screen, if you go to your view button at the top right corner and select speaker, that'll make the screen a little bit bigger for you. Okay, all right, so we're gonna sit nice and tall. Fingertips can either be together or resting on your palm. And you're gonna simply inhale through your nose and exhale through your nose. So a yoga breath is a diaphragmatic breath where it comes deep into the diaphragm. And I'm sorry, I should have done this first. Before we even get to that, take a deep breath in through your nose. And if you were gonna fog a mirror, breathe out like you're fogging a mirror. So in through your nose, out through your mouth for the first couple breaths. Breath in and then exhale and breath in. And now you'll try that breath, but keeping your throat closed and forcing that breath out through your nose. So sit up nice and tall, take a deep breath in and empty out. And breath in and empty out. And just that simple act of breathing is improving your immune system. And it also helps massage the thoracic duct. So when you exhale and you compress and you force that air out from the diaphragm and up through, it massages that thoracic lymph that is the largest lymph in the body and it helps move that fluid. So take a few minutes to just continue to breathe in and to breathe out. And to see if you can link that to your statement. Inhale, and then empty. And then whatever it is your mantra is, breathe it in and breathe it out. And then once you've quieted your mind and you've sat still for a few moments, we want to start to move our spine. So the very first thing we're going to do is just try to lengthen a little from the side body. So we think about our rib cage and our hips connected. We want to just create some space from the hip bone to the rib cage. So we're in essence lengthening our spine like if there were a string attached to the crown of Sarah's head. 
lifting. So you're creating space in the neck, space through the ribs and through the spine. Breath in, empty. You can feel yourself drop a little. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. One more time, inhale. And then exhale. And now we're gonna try a little side flexion. So you're gonna keep your right arm at your side and your left arm overhead. And again, you're gonna inhale and imagine lengthening both sides of the body and exhale coming to the side. And she wants to pay a lot of attention. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, come to the side. Imagine there's a barrel underneath the side of her rib cage. So you're going up and over, up and over, up and over. Inhale, exhale, and now we're just gonna cartwheel. So exhale it back, inhale, sweep it up. We're gonna stay on that same side, sweep it up, and exhale, come down. And again, up and down. And we're just gonna do this eight times. And sweep it down, and then four, and exhale. Inhale up and over five, being really mindful of keeping that right side of the body lifted. And then just two more. Inhale up and over. And last one, inhale up and over. And if for any reason you have restrictions in your shoulder, you can always just keep your hand at your heart and just still take that side bend still take that side bend. You can take a goalpost arm and still take it, but we're looking for side flexion in the spine. And now we're gonna try the other side. So our left hand's at our side and our right hand's up and over. Inhale and exhale. And we're gonna stay here for just a few breaths, but every inhale, you wanna think about lifting through the left side of the body. And now we'll exhale, cartwheel it down and eight times on this side. Inhale, one, and exhale down and inhale up and over two and empty it out and inhale and exhale. So Sharon, it's not a, a really big movement. It's almost like a very small movement, right? You're really just stretching this side of the body and lifting and coming up and over this side. Okay. And just two more. And again, if you have any kind of, if like breast cancer, people have a lot of lymphedema in their shoulders, they can do this simply by resting their arm or keeping it in a goal post. So any restrictions you have, there's a modification for. And most of us know our bodies well enough that we can find a way to get that mimic, that same movement and it feel okay. So our next, so this was our lateral flexion side to side. This is gonna be our extension. So we're gonna place our hands on our knees. And if you're familiar with a cat cow in yoga, so extension and flexion, we're gonna inhale, we don't wanna do anything to our neck. So we're simply gonna tuck our bum. So I'm gonna to turn to the side, but this is all ladies. So you're gonna tuck your bum and lift your chest, but in a chair and then round it. Tuck and lift. So you can't see Sarah from the side, but you can just simply open, expand the chest and you wanna be gentle with your neck here. One of the side effects of chemo can be a loss of bone density. So we're very careful not to take our movements as exaggerated as we do in a normal yoga class because we do not want to create any fractures, any stress fractures. So just a gentle rounding of the spine and lengthening. So our extension and our flexion. Feels really good. <laughs> yeah, and it should feel good. And then let's just do one more. And then to whatever degree is comfortable for you, I have a bolster here that Sarah could use or a pillow if you have it. You're just gonna drape yourself over it and let your back round and just hang here. So just allowing yourself, and if you don't need a bolster, if you can get your chest to your thighs, you can just hang for a moment, let your head hang heavy. And again, continue with that, <laughs> the inhales and the exhales, the breathing in and the breathing out. One more full breath, and then we're gonna gently round up. So you can just kind of roll up like you're trying to hit every vertebrae in the middle of your back, all the way up, shoulders are down. And then we'll just move that pillow out of the way. And now we're going to take our twist. 
So we're gonna sweep our arms up and then you're gonna exhale right hand to the left knee and then the left hand can go to the side of the chair. Inhale, sweep it up and exhale, twist to the opposite side. And then you can use the leverage of the chair to kind of twist yourself deeper. And we're gonna do four to each side. Inhale up, exhale, twist. Inhale, sweep it up, exhale, twist. Again, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And on this last one, we're gonna hold. So inhale up, exhale, twist over to the left. And then inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, see if you can twist a little deeper. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist deeper. One more time, inhale and exhale deep. Sweep the arms up and twist to the other side. And then again, every inhale lengthens the spine, every exhale twists a little deeper. And again, this is what massages the ascending and the descending colon and helps with constipation. So if you're feeling constipated, this is a movement, any gentle twisting will help. And then we're gonna come back to center. And now we're gonna to try to put that together. So we're gonna sweep our arms up. We're gonna exhale, bring our arms into a goal post. We're gonna inhale, expand across the chest. Exhale, round out through the back. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, twist over to the right. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, twist over to the left. Inhale, sweep the arms up, drop the right arm and bend to the left, to the right. Sweep the arms back the other way. Exhale, come back into the goal post arms. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, round the chest out. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Drop the right arm and reach over to the right. Cartwheel the arms down, reach over to the left. And then last time through, goal post arms. Inhale, open up through the chest. Exhale, round out through the back. Inhale, arms are straight up. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, drop the arm and reach to that right side. Cartwheel down, reach to the left. Come back to center and take a moment to just breathe. How's everybody feeling? Any questions? Anything not feel good or anything feel restricted? Jen, any feedback? I feel so good. My back may have cracked a little bit. <laughs> That's the whole thing. And so just yeah. moving. So we're just moving the spine in all the directions that the spine is meant to move. And the benefits of that link to breath are it slows you down. Yeah. Quiet the mind. It massages the lymph. It works the digestive system. And the deeper breathing helps with our autoimmune functions. So the more oxygen we take in, the more toxins we exhale. So we want to breathe in that good air and then we want to move our lymph and get rid of all the, my dog is barking, I apologize guys, um, and get rid of the toxins in our body. So that deep breath is for a reason. That's and awesome. That we connect to our movements, just force the body to slow down. And it also keeps us really present in this moment. We have a saying in our classes, when things are a little difficult, um, argue for your limitations and you get to keep them, drop your arguments and you become limitless. So sometimes we don't want to do something and we say I can't because when we make those arguments, we keep them. But when we just say, okay, I'll try, we become limitless. There is always a way to move your body. Our bodies were meant to move, meant to breathe. We're doing nothing but moving and breathing. It's a simple, simple thing. So I love that. if it doesn't feel right, you can find a way to do it that works for you. Anyway, I love that. We've gotten some feedback. It felt great, wonderful, feel really relaxed. Uh, lots of great feedback. We have one that says, I do feel some tension in my neck. Can that be normal? Um, yes, 
So if you're feeling tension in your neck, the first thing you wanna notice is when you're reaching your arm up, if you are lifting your shoulder blade, you are gonna automatically create tension. So Sarah, raise your arm up for a minute. So Sarah, if she lifts it up so that the shoulder blade comes up, it's gonna create tension. She wants to work at tucking the shoulder blade down and then reaching. So you have to get accustomed to, it's almost like we say, tuck your shoulder blades in your back pocket and reach long. And that kind of releases some of the neck tension. So if you're up here, you're gonna have it. So you always wanna be mindful that you're dropping the shoulders, dropping the shoulders, dropping the shoulders throughout the movement. And if you do have neck tension, you can simply go from one shoulder to the other. You never wanna take your head all the way around. You wanna go shoulder to shoulder to protect the cervical spine. Um, so that's, that's our basic spinal movement. And if you do nothing else during the day, this is a five minute thing you could do a couple times a day that's gonna make you feel a little bit better, that's gonna slow you down a little bit, quiet your mind. There are yes. studies that show that every single day that we do not exercise in some fashion, we lose 7% of our energy. So if you take a couple weeks off, you're depleting your energy. And if you know that if you take five minutes to do this and you're gonna feel better, why not, right? Why not? Um, one of the things, you know, we say the argue for your limitations. Another saying that we have in our classes is, is balance equanimity. You want to meet life where it's meeting you. So if you're not feeling great today, maybe just sit and breathe and just use your mantra. And if you're feeling really good, maybe you're going to go a little further and we're going to look at some of that stuff now. So we did our basic spinal movements. Now we're going to look at some movements that build density in the um, muscles or that build muscular strength. And this can be done in a chair or it can be done standing. So I'm gonna have Sarah do it in the chair and I'm gonna do the standing version of it. So we're gonna simply just pick up our right leg, kick it forward, bring it in and set it down. And it's a simple movement. Inhale, exhale, inhale and empty. And again, inhale, exhale, inhale and drop. Lift, kick, bring it in, and lower. You are activating the quadricep. And one of the things that they talk about in the yoga for cancer classes are the squeeze and release. So when you extend that leg and you squeeze that muscle, and then you bring it in and you release it, you are releasing tension from your body. So really just go through that maybe one or two times, go really nice and slow and think about squeezing the muscles and releasing like a sponge. You squeeze it and then all the toxins come out and it comes back to its original shape. And now let's try that on the other leg. So pick up the left leg, kick it out, squeeze the thigh muscles, pull it in, set it down. Pick it up, kick it out, pull it in and set it down. And if you feel some fatigue in your hip flexors, that's also normal. Um, building strong hip flexors is an important part of your mobility, especially as you age. So as you're in the recovery process, you don't want to worry about that. That's going to build strength and that, that's a good thing. Okay, so if you're doing it seated, you're still working the quadriceps, working the hip flexors. If you're doing it standing, you're also building a little bit of the bone density by shifting your weight from one side to the other and working on balance. And I always recommend having a chair or a wall next to you. Um, our next movement is gonna be some external rotation of the hip. So seated, you can, Sarah, simply cross your ankle, right ankle over the left, you're gonna start. So this is our very basic, and that's just a little bit of external rotation. If you can bring it up a little higher, and rest it on, you can either rest it on a pillow or a, we don't have a access to this, but you want to open the hip up so it's externally rotated. Bring it all the way up above your knee. So this is where a full range of motion would be. And if you have any kind of lymphedema that's restricting that, you just want to let the leg fall out to the side so that you're externally rotating. And you're just going to sit here and breathe and you can begin to just self-assist by taking your thumb into the crease and just massaging that 
and twisting and twisting and opening up. Does anybody have any questions with that? I know sometimes this is hard when there's not somebody right there with you, but right in our lymph nodes are stored in that hip crease. And we're just opening that up, opening that up, releasing any tension there. And then eventually we'll elevate our legs so that we can drain that. So you're just massaging the top of that thigh muscle to the outside. I like assisting yeah. yourself to open it up a little bit. To oh, I see. Okay. Take the femur in the hip socket. Got it. This feels good. Again, you'll go to whatever degree is comfortable for you to fold over it. So folding over that is going to stretch that a little bit deeper. And you'll take a breath here. Oh, yes, I feel that. <laughs> and, and as you move through these poses, you know, sometimes the poses are uncomfortable. And one of the benefits of yoga is that it teaches us to breathe through discomfort. Oh. So if you're feeling tension in your hip and you're tensing up, you're creating more tension. But if you feel that tension and you acknowledge this is just muscular tension, I can take a deep breath in and a deep breath out and I can surrender to that tension. I'll get some ease in my hip. We talk about in our yoga classes, this is my favorite acronym. It's PEMIS, not to be confused with, but it's your physical body. So right now we're working in our physical body. We start to feel that tension and it's our energetic body. Our bodies are made up of energy, it's simply physics. So you start to feel that energetic response in your hip, that tension. And then we get into the monkey mind. So the M stands for monkey mind or our mental self. And that's the place that tells us, I've got to run away from this. This is uncomfortable. That fight or flight reflex where we want to run. And then our intellectual self will say, this is just a hip opener and you're going to be okay. And so we go through the physical body, the energetic body, the monkey mind, and then we get to that intellectual level of self where we can say, just breathe. It'll be okay. And so even though this is just a yoga pose, that carries over into our everyday life. Like we get all bombarded with everything that's happening and we start to feel that anxiousness. And then we can like use our intellectual self to say, stop. Doesn't matter if I forgot to buy chocolate chips today. Doesn't matter if their homework isn't done. It's not gonna impact their lifelong dream, <laughs> you know? It's, it's just one thing and it'll be okay. And so we learn to use that intellectual self in our yoga poses to create calm. And then hopefully that carries over outside of our mat where we can use that when we start to feel overwhelmed to just really look at the facts and realize it's okay. And so Sharon, we do have a question. Yes. Um, how she, how Sarah is demonstrating leaning over the pillow like that to stretch how would you recommend doing that if someone's standing? Would you recommend that they sit and do that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that if they're super strong and healthy, they could use this and, and sit, which this again will build, but I don't recommend this unless they have been practicing yoga or have done multiple boot camps. So we'll do the other side, just cross that ankle over. And even if you're just sitting, start, start with it down below. Even if you're just sitting like this, you can still fold over and surrender the muscles in the back and in that hip. And then I love the self-assist where you put your thumb into the crease and rotate the femur, rotate the femur, rotate the femur. So you can go back to the, the full range of motion. And then it, uh, you'll see this can take some time, but the beauty of it is if you're doing this in a class or by yourself, you have the time to really quiet your mind. And I wouldn't be talking this much if we were in a normal class setting. I'd get you into the pose and then let you sit and breathe in it. So just breathe in. And again, when you find yourself hearing that I've got to do this, I've got to do this, wrap it up, I need to leave. Step away from that, go back to your breathe in, I am strong, breathe out, I am healthy, or whatever mantra you chose, and let that just 
chase away all the other thoughts. Shouldn't be no hard to say. Whatever. It feels good you can lean over. We'll just take a couple more breaths. So that was opening up our hips. And the first exercise was for our quads. And now we'll move into our hamstrings. So Sarah, you can do that you're seated. And you're going to extend the right leg and flex the toes towards your shin. And you can roll the toes towards your ankle, roll the arch towards your other ankle, but just continue to pull the toes towards you. And you can rest that foot on the floor so it doesn't have to be. And then again, you wanna sit up nice and tall here. And then exhale, start to hinge over with a nice straight spine. And so you, have, you can place your hand to a block or to your shin. You can do this if you're standing, you can just Fold across that thigh, but you want to feel the stretch through the back of the leg. Breathing in and breathing out. Breath in and empty. Is there a certain amount of time that you suggest holding each pose? So, in the yeah. yoga for cancer, they move a little bit more. In a typical stretch, you want to hold it at least 20 seconds. We recommend four to eight breaths. And we're going to get into some of the warrior poses once we get through this. But I didn't know tonight if we would. That's a lot of getting down onto the floor. So I'm going to show them one or two of those. So if you're going to do the whole warrior series, then you'd hold this less. If you're not going to do that, you would want to hold this about eight breaths. Okay. And then let's switch sides. So let's go over to the left side, extend that left leg. And then you have to get curious. This is your body. You have to know what feels good to you. Does Do you need it more your pinky toe towards the ankle or the arch of your foot towards that other ankle and pull that towards you? And then just get curious about where you're moving your foot as you fold over, where do you feel it the most? Where do you need it the most? And you wanna think nice straight spine hinging at the hips. Imagine there's a clothesline across mm. your hip and you're folding over it. Oh, wow, when I, stri when I straightened my spine, I felt a whole new stretch. <laughs> a whole different, yeah, it's a very long straight spine is what we're looking for here. Yeah, so that is an active pose. And then with that long straight spine, if you want to surrender and round out, that's an ease pose. You're still benefiting, but there's a very different feeling from the lengthening of the spine to the collapsing of the spine. Okay, and we're gonna sit up. So now you see we've worked our quadriceps our hamstrings, our hip flexors. We've done some ankle flexion. We did our arms with our twisting and lengthening through our spine. Um, one of the things we do in a Yoga for Cancer class is, is a warrior series. And this is a little bit more advanced. So we're gonna go through this and you guys can stop me. I just didn't think with our last, when we did this last year for just the Pittsburgh area, a lot of people were just staying in their chairs, so I don't want to waste anybody's time, but I do sure. want to see what a class actually looks like. So sure. Sarah's going to come to the front of her mat, and I'm going to put a chair on each side of her mat, and you can use a chair, you can use yoga blocks, um, but in a typical sun salutation, a Sarah, you'll stand up there. You're going to inhale your arms overhead. Now, is that too close that you can't yes. see her? Here, let me move this back some, guys. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. There you go. So come up. See if you can come up. So she's going to use the chairs to assist her to get, I'm going to turn them this way so that you can place your hands on the, um, okay. She's going to inhale her arms overhead. And she's gonna exhale and her forward fold, her hands are gonna come just to her chair. 
So in a normal traditional yoga class, your forward fold, you would go hands to the floor. We want to be really mindful of not creating any problems with our bone density and forward flexion can cause stress fractures in the spine. So she's at that halfway mark. And now she's going to step back with her right foot and drop to her right knee. And then she's going to come down onto her left knee and walk her hands to the floor. And she can either stay in a tabletop or she can step her feet back into a plank position. And she can take a full breath in and a full breath out. And now she'll drop her left knee and bring her right foot back to the front of the mat. Walk her hands up to the chair, step her left foot in and inhale, stand up tall. So that's the beginning of a sun salutation A, and that's a very modified version. Does anybody have any questions or want me to go a little bit slower so they can try it at home? <laughs> I don't have any comments so far, but I see some people I see some people doing it along with you, Sharon. <laughs> you go, Janet. <laughs> Okay, let's try it. We'll try it one more time on the other side. Yes, they're saying, please show it again. That would be great. Inhale, arms go overhead. And stop here for a moment because this is an area where you can do some lymphatic brushing. So oh. simply brush your arms down. You always want to come towards the body, towards the body, towards the body, and then switch hands. Brush straight down right into that shoulder joint. And then inhale, get a little bit taller, grow a little bit longer. And then exhale, your hands are going to come to your chair. Or if you have yoga blocks or something, but you don't want to fold all the way in half. So Sarah's in a 90 degree angle. Her spine is lengthened. She's still going to benefit from lengthening the spine here and feel the strength in her legs. Full breath in. She's going to go ahead and step her right leg back and then bend the knee and drop it to the floor. And then she's going to walk her hands down to the floor and take the left knee back. So she's in a tabletop position. She has the option to stay here. So if going into a full plank is challenging for some of us, you can stay here and step your right leg back in, or you can step your right leg back. So left leg meets it into a high plank Then take a breath in and a breath out. And you would drop your left knee to the floor swing your right leg forward walk your hands up to the chair or to blocks your left leg would come in and meet it take a breath in that forward half fold exhale out and then inhale sweep it back up and that would just be a modified sun salutation a you can bring your hands at your side and so the benefit again of this you are concentrating on your movements so when you are have to inhale up, exhale, fold, inhale, step back, exhale, drop my knee, drop my other knee. Well, you are so present in this moment that you don't have time to be distracted. So there's a methodology here that requires your intense concentration. And we talked about the five key components of fitness, muscular strength, muscular endurance, flexibility, balance. That's all happening here. And the missing link is mindfulness and you have to be so present because nobody wants to fall, nobody wants to get hurt. So you are fully present in paying attention to these movements and the fact that we're going a little bit slower and we're breathing deep while we do them, quiets our mind, calms our body and keeps us in this moment. We have a, um, I actually got this from my priest. Depression is living in the past. Anxiety is living in the future but peace is in this present moment. And so when you are that aware of what you're doing, you have no choice but to find a little bit of peace, even through the discomfort of some of these movements. I love that. Any questions on that basic sun A? No questions. That's good. So we're gonna try a sun um, B pose now. So Sarah, you can come up between the chairs again. Inhale, sweep your arms up. And again, if you need the lymph brushing, you can always take that while you're extended. And then we're gonna exhale and sit down like you're sitting into a chair. And now the arms extended can be a lot. So you can place your hands down to the side. 
and you can rest them on the chair if you like. And we're just gonna stay here and breathe. And then you can come up onto the ball of the left foot and then roll up onto the ball of the right foot. And then just alternate here a little bit. So just this foot flexibility, ankle flexibility is good for the, your balance, good for the body. And then come back, inhale, sweep it up, stand all the way up. Exhale, take that half forward fold, so hands come to the chair. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, step the right foot back. Drop above the right knee. And now you're gonna open that hip up. So from that right knee, you're gonna place your hands down to the floor. Pivot your back foot, your right foot. I'm gonna see if I can show you this. So pivot your foot into a warrior foot, Sarah, that right foot back, if you guys can see that. And then she's gonna use the chairs to walk herself up into a warrior one. So a warrior one pose that is supported, and you can keep your hands on the chair if that feels better. But the benefit of this, again, you're on one leg and the back foot is turned at an angle. So the toes are forward of the heel and you're pressing into the pinky toe edge. Yep. And now you've got your chair to support you. You can also bring your hands to your thighs to support you. You can walk up to your hips and you can stay right here, hands on your hips, or you can extend the arms up. So depending on how you're feeling on any given day, there's all kinds of options, but a warrior pose, the benefits again, bone density, muscular strength, muscular endurance, the breath, massages the lymph nodes, and then it's a forward facing hip pose. Full breath in, exhale, bring your hands down to the chair. Step that back foot in to meet it. Inhale, lengthen, half lift. And then exhale, go ahead and come down your left knee. And now you're gonna send the left leg back and set up for that warrior pose on the back of the left foot. And then you can walk yourself up and you can stay wherever it feels good. But when we are in a warrior pose, we want our hips forward facing. We want the pinky toe edge of the back foot rooted. We want the toes forward of the heel. So instead of parallel, it's like at 11 o'clock or two o'clock. And then the hips forward face. And then here's another place you can do some lymphatic brushing. Nice. And then taking getting some, getting some comments that say they love this. <laughs> Good. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put our hands down to the thing. Go ahead and drop, pivot that back foot, drop down onto the knee, and then bring your other knee back and we're gonna come back into tabletop. So we're gonna place our hands into a tabletop position and I'm gonna move the chair out of the way so she has a little bit of room here. And when you're in your own home, you're gonna to set yourself up. We're gonna reach our right leg back and press onto the ball of the foot. And then we're gonna peel open into a modified side plank. And then you can just reach that arm forward. And here's a place where you can start to just get some motion through the arms. Stop here, take a full breath in. Now exhale, see if you can thread through. So you're gonna just reach under. So this is some twisting. This is for the digestive system. And then again, we're getting lymph drainage. And then our twist is getting the digestive system. And then our deep breath is our immune system and we exhale, ring it out. You wanna think about squeezing out that sponge, inhale it up, and then exhale, come back into a tabletop position. And now we'll send the left leg back, peel open to that left side. And same thing, we'll make some circles first to get into the hip, or the, I'm sorry, shoulder joint. And then reach it up, and then exhale, thread it through and then lift and exhale thread and then lift and exhale thread one more time and then exhale plant your hands 
come back into tabletop position. So coming to the floor is something we wanna be really careful with. And so we're gonna get, I wanna get Sarah onto her backside. So again, you know you better than anyone else. You can push your hips back and then she can start to shift her bum onto the right side or the left side, whichever side is stronger and swing her legs around. Is there anybody that's having any trouble getting to the floor? If they're on the floor, they probably can't type in a comment. <laughs> so please be careful. <laughs> okay. Just be very careful. But our goal of getting to the floor is then gonna to be to elevate our legs. So we wanna be really careful. In a traditional yoga class, legs up the wall is one of the ways that you would um, end a class or near the winding down part of the class. Here, we don't wanna go all the way up the wall because again, that puts us in that same 90 degree angle, which can cause stress fractures. So if you have a bolster pillow or a pillow, or a blanket, you're going to want to just start to prop your feet up a little bit. And then you're going to use your elbow to come down as carefully as you can. You can have a blanket or a pillow for underneath the neck. Get all the way down. And then I'm going to actually put Sarah's feet up on the bolster because she's worked so hard tonight. <laughs> and it just feels nice. And what you want to do is, like we say, windshield wiper your feet. So you just want to, hi oh, guys, oh, this looks funny, Sarah, you should see it. <laughs> so your feet fall out to the side. So sometimes, you know, especially in class, I see people that keep their feet straight up and that's like a, not a relaxed hip. Mm. It's a wiper so that the hip bone in the femur socket falls out to the side and then the feet are slightly elevated. And here's another place, if you have the abdominal strength, you could start to do some lymphatic brushing through the legs and you always want to go up towards the lymph nodes when you're sitting in the chair you can brush here for the thoracic lymph can you, can you speak a little bit to the lymphatic brushing the benefits of that yes yeah, so this is i guess the largest lymph um, in the body and again we don't have a pump for the lymphatic system so it relies on movement and it mm -hmm. relies on gravity and so we, when we brush up and up and up, it helps release that fluid. So when you're sitting in a chair, this helps with the release. When you're coming towards the arms, get the arms on when you're laying, if you're on the floor and you're seated upright, or if you have a person in your life that is kind and sweet, you can have them brush for you while you're relaxing there, but you wanna move that fluid. Um, the breath alone, though the deep exhales will help with that compression. When we talk about the squeeze and release, the rinse and release, your exhales will help release. And when you, we think about, so yoga, it's a diaphragmatic breath. It's an inhale and exhale through the belly, up through the throat. If you kind of contract the rib cage a little on that final emptying out, you'll also help massage that thoracic duct. And, you know, that's interesting, Sharon, because I always thought, because from what I know, your lymphatic system kind of mimics your circulatory, you know, you think your circulatory has a pump. So I just assumed that your lymphatic pumped by itself. So this is very interesting. This is what yoga for cancer teaches. I love that. I don't have, I'm, not, I'm not a doctor, so I learned that in my training, but now I want to I love that. Training. Because I think, what if I'm wrong and I'm sharing all this stuff? No, it's amazing to think that simple that, movements like that can help that stay. It's movement and gravity that moves the lymph system that our heart and lungs yeah. have to pump, like our cardiovascular system and our circulatory system mm -hmm. have a pump that works for it. Yeah. The system relies on movement and gravity to drain the lymph. I love that. And so then at the end of our yoga class, we will find a comfortable position to rest in. And you wanna take at least five minutes, possibly 10, and I won't leave you here that long today, but I usually end my yoga classes with a reading that's one of my favorite books is Journey to the Heart and it's Melody Beatty. And sometimes I just open it or sometimes I go by the date, but I thought the date today was kind of appropriate, August 17th, it's let shifts happen. I listened as the tour guide explained the crack 
huge gaping rupture in the Earth's surface as we traveled along Bryce Canyon. My mind traveled back to an earthquake that shook Southern California in January 1994. Earthquakes are reminders that life shifts, moves, changes places. Sometimes the shifts are gradual and begin slowly, like the gaping hole in Bryce Canyon that started with a tiny split. Sometimes, as in the California earthquake, the shift happens in an instant. We don't know in advance about it. We can't plan for it, but there is a shift and we're forced to deal with it. There is one thing we can count on, however. Just as nature shifts and moves into new shapes and forms, so do we. Sometimes our shifts happen suddenly. Other times they take place over years, beginning almost imperceptibly. As we move into increased self-awareness, we'll become more aware of these shifts. We'll know, we'll see, and we'll feel when they're taking place. We may not know where they're leading, but we'll know something's afoot. The more we value and trust life, the more we can count on these shifts to lead us forward and to trust the new shape being formed in our lives. The more flexible we become, the more we will allow for these shifts and work with them instead of against them, and the easier they will become. Life is always moving, changing, shifting into its next shape. The movement is natural, it's how we evolve. Let the shifts happen, take responsibility for yourself each step of the way, trust the new shape and the form of your world. I thought that was appropriate because when we speak about cancer and how we don't have a choice, we get it, we get it, um, but we can choose how we respond and it does create a shift in our life. And one of the things that if nothing else, the pandemic should have taught us is that every single one of us are resilient. We yeah as human beings are resilient creatures. And you know, when we compare resiliency to recovery, sometimes resiliency is better. It makes us stronger. Not everybody gets to have cancer. And there's a lot of really beautiful things that happen from having cancer. You learn to allow people to help you. You learn to drop perfectionism. We always say perfectionism is a thief of joy and it is. There are things that you just have to let go. Like right now there is shit on my floor and it is what it is. But <laughs> that's the benefit of learning and recovering and relying on people and relying on themselves. And so this movement, this breath, this is something that you can take control of. You can empower yourself with. And you can learn to find ease where you need to find ease and find strength where you need to find strength. Um, the studio that I owned up until January, our motto was power and peace. And you can be strong and you can be soft, you can be powerful and you can be peaceful and you can take control of that and choose your response and react from a place of intellect rather than monkey mind. And you're going to find a lot more ease in your life. And that will give you the sleep that you need, the strength that you need, and the confidence to just kick cancer's ass. <laughs> exactly. I was tremendous. Can you name the, the name of that book again that you were just reading from? Um, yes, this is Melody Beatty, Journey from the Heart. And it is just a daily book. It is one of my favorites. I buy it for, I bought it for every child I have, every teenage niece and nephew. And tell them all I want them to do is keep a journal and read it one page a day. And it really That's has amazing. great stuff in it. Is Sarah so relaxed back behind you that she's asleep? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to pop up like that, but Sarah's strong. No, no, yes, no, 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 thank you, strong. Sarah. <laughs> you do get up from the floor. And again, we all know our bodies. You typically want to roll to the side. Take your time so that you don't make yourself dizzy. Um, my training was through yoga for cancer and i think you shared the information but it's y4c.com and it has classes that you can join live classes you can watch on demand i am in the pittsburgh area and would be happy to do this i lost my studio i'm bored out of my mind <laughs> oh. <laughs> help anyone so if you need contact information i'm sure jen can share it with you but Absolutely. i will happily have a group class for you your caretakers anybody um, I just think it's so important. And recently, I've also been doing a lot of reading about just the benefits of walking. So yeah. you just get out and walk. And again, that moderate exercise means you can carry on a conversation. Even 10, 15 minutes a day 
you're going to feel better. And it's the one thing that you are absolutely able to control on a daily basis. So I encourage you to just take that power and use it. Get out there five minutes, 10 minutes. If it's this yoga, if it's bringing a golf club or getting into a swimming pool, but any movement helps. And if you can link breath to it, you're going to feel a whole lot better. Thank you for that, Sharon. Appreciate that so much. This was amazing. Um, really, we've got some comments coming in saying thank you so much. So grateful to have this space and this time to do this. Very beneficial. Thank you so much. Um, is Sharon available to hire for an hour Zoom for friends? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Wise everywhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, we do have a few questions, if you don't mind. Um, okay, great. Well, one of them is, um, is it okay to do regular yoga if you are used to it while on chemo? So or is it hot yoga? I'm or not sure. Maybe she'll chime in here and see. So again, the yoga for cancer training says yeah. I, I had a hot yoga studio. I had a woman with breast cancer. It's not hot yoga, by the way, sorry. So if you're already accustomed to it and your doctor says yes, yes, I will tell you that I've had throughout the 20 some years of me teaching this and I've had clients who have practiced their entire treatment and never had any problems. Mm -hmm. um, again, the manual's written by attorneys and so you are responsible for you and I would check with your doctor, but if you feel strong enough to do it, by all means do it. The one thing that they caution about is the forward folding um, can cause stress fractures in the spine and because they can't see your bones and see if you've lost bone mass, mm. a forward fold can cause stress fractures. And um, they recommend people with osteopenia and osteoporosis not do them. Yeah. So it's, that's something that you'll have to determine. And I would ask your doctor. Yeah. We, we did, we, so instead of taking the forward fold, you just take that half fold and keep your hands at your hips. Instead of coming all the way to the floor, you can do your, so you come here for your half fold and you can step back into your poses rather than using the chairs. So I think that there is absolutely ways to modify that, but I think the biggest concern is the forward folds and that it can cause stress fractures in your spine. Thank you for mentioning that. We had an Ask the Expert session just last month, a few weeks ago, on bone density and the importance of getting those checks um, while on treatment. So thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Um, we do have another question about how to get stronger knees. Is there a yoga pose that can help strengthen your knees? So if you know, <laughs> to get stronger knees, so our knees, when we have like bone on bone compression or um, pain in our knees, you want to strengthen the ligaments around the knees. And that seated chair exercise that we did was yeah. one of the most beneficial things you can do. So if you kick out, kick in, I have a, my father's 83 and he has arthritis really bad. So I literally make him do this every day and I have him put a rubber band on and march. So that builds hip flexor strength. Oh, yeah. Build, this builds quad strength, taking a band on your foot. So, or a towel and pushing against it, pushing against it, pushing yeah. it, having somebody pull it to the side, pull it to the side, pull it to the side. I don't even have, here, I have a blanket. So this is gonna, we're gonna do this. <laughs> so it works. So if you have somebody like, say, imagine this is a, a, a strap, pull this for a second. So I go this way and they pull against it. Oh. So, pull in. so this strengthens all the ligaments around the knee. Around the knee, yeah. Yeah. And then you would go the opposite direction and push against it and then pull towards it. So you'd go in all four directions and you want a, a strap pulling away as you pull the toe towards you pulling towards you as you push away, right. pulling to the right as you pull left. And that helps strengthen the ligaments around the knee. And that's the least, that's non-weight bearing. The other, if you are strong enough, wall squats, like leaning against the wall and just sitting in a 90 degree angle will build the strength in the quads. Tapping the toes helps develop the shin muscle. So, but I, again, 
you want to be careful if you've had chemo and you're not sure what your bone density is, you're not going to fracture, you shouldn't fracture doing a wall squat, but if you would slip and fall, then you could have a problem. And sometimes when you're in a wall squat, your feet, if you're on a hardwood floor, um, could be sure. a little precarious. Sure. Well, thank you. I, I love the seated exercises for strengthening the knees. I think that they are so good for you. Yes, I have to do those specifically in physical therapy and it really does work. <laughs> so, well, that's great. I don't see any other questions coming through. Um, just wanna thank you, Sharon and Sarah, so much for your wisdom, your knowledge and your passion and your compassion that you show for others. And this was just amazing. I think it was a really good time, well, well time spent, <laughs> a good space to be in. So thank you so, so much. I know, I feel so relaxed, I could almost cry. <laughs> So. Oh, I'm glad that's the goal. We had <laughs> make you feel better when you leave than when you came. Yes. So hopefully that everyone here feels better because that's what we hope for. Yes. So thank you all for joining us this evening. And we hope to see you next time, September 26th for our digital session on sleep, how better tips on how to rest better. So again, you can, this will be recorded and put on our YouTube channel so you can refer back to it at any time. So thank you all and have a good evening. All right, and at y4c.com if you- I put it in the chat, yep, y4c.com, absolutely. All right, thanks everyone, <laughs> have a great Thank evening. you so much. All right, thanks Sarah, appreciate you very much.